Hyundai invited us out to beautiful Laguna Seca for one of the quietest, most aggressive driving experiences I've had in a long time. This is probably one of the most ideal places to have a wild time in a 600 plus horsepower electric vehicle. Let's hit the hardest, toughest, most controversial fact right away. Why is a person with one of the most beautiful sounding, loudest cars in the world here with Hyundai? on an electric vehicle. Well, couldn't be a more appropriate place here at Laguna where, of course, the neighbors are trying to sue for sound ordinances and closing the tracks. That is happening not just here, but all across the country. That one fact alone is enough to understand why the future of electric vehicles has a place to keep just what we love doing already open is to be a little bit quieter. It was put best this way, is that just because new music comes out doesn't mean that it replaces your favorite classics my four-rotor and those cars continue to exist, but you can also have this too. I think the best part about this is the engineers behind this vehicle really align with the heart and soul of what I love doing. Now, one of the biggest problems of being a person like myself or like you that tinkers is that your tinkered car doesn't run as well as a well-machined engineered car from the factory. That's just, that's just facts. I cannot do as much track time, and this blows my mind, that this car can do Nordschleife twice on one battery charge, sounding like these behind me. There isn't really a car I've seen yet that has shown off the future for performance enthusiasts like this car. The Hyundai Ioniq 5N is an all-wheel drive monster with up to 641 horsepower. There are two sets of motors, front and rear. You can adjust both brake pressure and power to each of the wheels. Or you can override it and then just drift this vehicle to your heart's content. They have chargers capable of charging this car from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes. Now, if you've been to a track day, you do your full session, you come back in, and before the next session is even finished, you're ready to go out again, and that's not how track days work. There's normally three to four run groups. So some of the wild features of this car that separate it from the model that it's based off of is a lot of suspension. And even the rear axles, as they were explaining, are all integrated and that, that was a weird thing. I was like, well, what, what's an integrated driveline axle? And as you guys probably know from my building of the four rotor, you have little axles, you have CV joints, you have wheel hubs, and they're very heavy. So what they did is they took from their rally technology and have much simpler, easier to use, stronger, cheaper parts to drive all four wheels. So all four wheels have this upgraded drive line. And not only that, of course, the 21 inch wheels brakes, which you really, at this point, almost don't need. I say that carefully because up to 0.6 Gs of deceleration, which is much higher than the industry standard of 0.4 Gs, the car uses the electric system to slow you down. And then above that is the brake calipers and rotors. Yeah. Now, the, the interesting thing about this car is underneath the vehicle, it's something that we always strive to be, and that's have as flat of a bottom as possible. So they took aerodynamics into play considerably. Some of my favorite things is, uh, we'll call it active aero, but what it does is helps with the cooling. And as you can tell, when, when these are closed, you're gonna get better aerodynamics. And when they're opened, they funnel more cooling to the coolers hidden behind them. And so you have an increase when you need it, and you have better aerodynamics when you don't. And that's something that is standard. There really aren't options. You get all of this for the base price of the 5N. If you press the right end button, I'm curious what that will do. Okay, so right now... Oh, we got some audio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my... Oh, easy, yes. easy. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, sorry. No, sorry. No, I got the purple no. tune. It's based off of your two liter, right? Correct. Yeah, so it's, it's based off of one of your other performance vehicles. <laughs> I can't help it. The end pedal, currently regeneration is a very distinct, strong force. Exactly. But you're using it handling the weight transfer of the car. So traditionally, regen braking is used for uh, efficiency, but we found that as an opportunity to actually help the driver control the mass of the car. Here, we made it even stronger. So you have a much stronger decelerative force. And what that does is it helps you to precisely control the mass of the car and the inertia of the car. Because as car enthusiasts, we're, we're used to cars weighing under two tons. Yes. And we're, we're used to a certain movement. Yeah. But what we learned with these two ton cars, you have to be, react faster. 
but uh, you can do it with your own driving skill but to augment that with the software you can rely less on the brakes and just uh, use your gas pedal oh i like that it, it, it takes some learning curve yeah. immediately it won't be that intuitive but once you get used to it, it it gets pretty fun when we started this car three or four years ago we had to start from scratch there were not many uh cars to benchmark if you tell a group of car enthusiasts inside the company to build an ev car we just did whatever we thought would be fun yes and that's how things kind of snowballed with all these little functions and we arrived here so there's a lot of motorsport thinking here hardware wise I'd like to point out the integrated drive axle. You know how you have the drive shaft and then you have the bearing and then that connects to the wheel hub. Yes. In rally cars, because they have such high uh, suspension travel, that creates another breakage point. If you can put the bearing and the drive shaft into one piece, then that also lightens the uh, unsprung weight. Ah, uh, true. True. And we applied that in the Elantra N first in front wheel drive, but for, for this car, the first time we use it in front and rear. So there's a little bit of a rally heritage there. This is obviously our first uh, all wheel drive car because we only had front wheel drive before the Veloster and Elantra. Oh, right. But we've in fact raced all wheel drive cars for eight years and two championships. So that kind of knowledge keeps circulating inside the company. So we can have rally drivers come in and say if this behavior is correct in off-road situation on snow or maybe smooth uh, dirt surfaces. Yes. And there's actually a YouTuber in Korea who's trying to turn this into rally cars. I, well. I was that, that's all I could think. It's like yeah. man, all these features really could make this not too far from a pretty impressive rally car. And battery preconditioning. So this also comes from a motorsport kind of thinking. So if you look at Formula One cars, for example, they're faster in qualifying trim compared to race. As you know, motorsports is all about balancing resources. You put all of that into speed, or you can put all of that into longevity and you know, like uh, the entire race stint. Like phones and tablets, batteries have a optimal temperature. You can set the battery temperature to drag, and that is the best temperature for immediate full use of power. If you do it multiple times, then you overheat quickly and then you have to cool down. Whereas if you go on track, because you're going to be out there for multiple laps, the battery sets to the lowest temperature possible, so you have the biggest thermal margin allowable. And that means you go out, you do one or two practice laps, right? Yes. And then the temperature will slowly rise and it will reach the optimum temperature. So these are the kind of uh, functions that were necessary to survive two laps at the Nürburgring and Nordschleife. That's incredible. You know, one of the things I thought was really impressive is how you guys have the push to pass. Yeah. It's almost like a homologated yeah. feature yeah. for your, your cup cars. There's a lot of EVs with boost functions. That's not that hard to engineer. Yeah. But what is hard to engineer is the cooldown time between the boosts. Oh. So you will notice a lot of EVs, manufacturers, they don't really communicate the cooldown time. Ours take 10 seconds. So that means in you can use multiple times on the track. And you, and you will notice you don't go full throttle for 10 seconds straight. So if you don't use the 10 seconds, you can turn it off after three, five seconds, turn it off. That also reduces cooldown time. Nice. And you can deploy it strategically on track, just like, a, you know, Formula One DRS, for yes. example. Yes, as a person who likes an ice and internal combustion yeah. engine. We all do. Uh, yeah, we all do, yeah. is we love tinkering. But I feel like a lot of electric vehicles on the market don't allow you to tinker mm -hmm. and that's half the fun of ownership mm -hmm. uh, when you're in this realm and I think this car satisfies my need yeah. to, to adjust and play and it's an honor to jump on Laguna Seca with Paul Dallenbach leading as we follow that, that's it's good when you know that your lead follow is somebody who can go incredibly faster than you can this is my first experience of this car on the track they're gonna be introducing more modes as we do three hot laps come back it's the same car just over and over. That part blows my mind. They did a special track clearance for Joel to jump in with it and with me. Uh, I have a feeling because the window's gonna be open, it's gonna be a little, a little whooshy. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be yelling over that. This being a first time with uh, an electric vehicle on track, I'm curious if I can hear the road noise and if that helps me. Uh, with driving. <laughs> oh, I feel it. 
start turning. Yeah. It definitely feels like a smaller car. It, it's controlling itself really well. for third tree, right? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Those G-forces though. Yeah. Glad I didn't eat for this. blows my mind. We just did several hot laps and we're going to be using the same vehicle. The battery temperature is only at 93 degrees. The car's basically ready to go again. That is very, very weird to experience. It should not do the things that we were just doing. And in fact, there are a couple moments where I really pushed the limit of the car and its controls and its, its weight balance and everything just really helped it sink back in and stay safe. And so uh, above all, that's uh, one hell of a track car that uh, it's it's not a track only vehicle but the performance aspect that is incredible that you could you know fit all the people inside of there and then also go and do something like this this vehicle is so cool and so mind-blowing to me that it makes sense why you have some of the fastest people in the world here helping show it off we're gonna go with Robin shoot who is current like last four times three times fastest man on the one mountain I'm trying to conquer myself, Pikes Peak. One of my inspirations, Robin Shute, is Hello. here. So you've driven this track a fair bit, right? A little bit, yeah. 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 Okay. Which bits do you struggle with and which bits? Um, really, I think this turn actually, uh, you know, yeah. turn one you know, is, is tough for me. Yeah, it's kind of sketchy. Yeah, and then I think the, what is it, three turning right? Uh, whatever, we're kind of off unloads the car to yeah. yeah. Would to you help if I close the windows? Yes, yeah. Yeah, we do that. That'd help a lot. Thank you. It's a bit naughty, but we'll get away with it. So turn three, yeah, there's a lot going on between two and three. We good? Yeah. You sitting comfortably? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I embrace. So this one, yeah, she got loaded up and then you've got to get it in. You can really lean on the car right Yes. 
Thank you fun. so much. Yeah. A lot of time. bouncing around back here. <laughs> yeah, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> we hiked at the end of our lunch over to the infamous corkscrew. It's gonna be absolutely quiet, other than the sound of tires squealing and squawking as they come down here. But this is America personified in terms of any sort of race course that anybody's familiar with, whether it's in a video game or in real life. This thing's nuts, and just how we had Robin taking this more sideways. Oh, nice. There you go, there you go. They also brought out one of the other main vehicles of the N-Line, and so they gave me the chance to autocross it, and this will be my first time ever autocrossing a front-wheel drive vehicle, but it's, it's one hell of a car. And so that's why we strapped this little guy on. I'm gonna try not to do this while I'm out there driving those. <laughs> we shall see how this goes. The Hyundai Elantra N is a blast at the autocross. Did I get a jacket or no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I did the 38. I did a 38. 